All right, now, everybody. Quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before. You know it's going to be a tough grind. But we're going to have a show. And hello, all. We are on the air everywhere. Wherever yeah, we you're are. listening, however you're listening, whenever you're listening or watching, it's great to have you in the mix. Kim is with us today, which is Kim, always cool, coming off that uh, Medoro show that she does in the morning. And I was watching some of it. And Tony is still in the mix, Thanks, too. Tony. I mentioned that because he was up with the Angels all night. He had an all nighter with the. Uh, <laughs> Do it again. The Anaheim Angels or the LA Angels or the California Angels. I prefer they Anaheim. Themselves. That's me personally, yeah. but I'm an Orange County boy. So yeah. And uh, welcome to all everywhere. I um, will tell you that with great enthusiasm that David K. Johnston is joining us in the second hour. And I think I may have mentioned to you there's a Supreme Court case that is being adjudicated right now. And adjudicated is a ding word. I think I still have my ding. Yeah. Um, if you missed us yesterday, one of our major machines went down with many of our sounds and drops. It's a, a very... Uh, Mask it with your iron rod. Oh, that one we still have. Okay, that's good. Anyway, this SCOTUS case that's going down right now, actually, could have a massive, massive effect on the tax code and on tax revenues in this country. And for that reason, it is worth visiting it with David K. Johnston, the tax and government legal specialist, best-selling author, Pulitzer Prize winner, of course. That will kick off our second hour. Jefferson Graham will be with us today as well. The new meta glasses, Facebook meta, whatever you want to call them, you know, He's talking about them as kind of new. Maybe this is the newest iteration. I thought they already had them. Didn't they have those Ray-Bans that could... Tony, you did you follow that stuff? They, I thought they those things were already out for a while. But Jefferson Graham tells me, no, 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 I just got my pair, and let me share what I've shot. And Thanks, Tony. The ones they had a while ago were still bulky, so I don't know. I haven't seen the new I ones, see. but, okay. but they were still Maybe bulky, are... and they had like a light on it to, to tell everyone yeah. it was recording, and people were right. like, you can get right. out of here with that. Light. That's right. So the people white could ring. know if you were recording them. That's yeah. I'll have to go get them. But my husband was at a developers conference and they had a giveaway and he, some trivia, he won the the Wayfarer, Wayfarer glasses. And this was like in the last month or so. Wow. And they were what? sent to our that house. That is so cool. You have, we have them there? We have them. I have no idea what to do with them. I, I well, we're not. I mean, Jeff but I'll bring can them power out. you we'll up. On, yeah, yeah, bring them out. Yeah, that's really yeah. great. Yeah, I don't know how much they are. If, if they work, maybe some of you already have them. But he has a pair, and he shot some video, and he's going to share more with us uh, on that. So uh, Jeff will be here, and also, um, who else? Is there anybody else coming through, Kim? I've lost track. Jefferson Graham and David K. Johnston. Okay, that's who we that's have. That's really today. really cool. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, good. Yeah. So, otherwise, it'll be just us girls. I love that. All right. The Mark Thompson Show. The, uh... Look at that. Before you start, Romania Animal Rescue for a $10. Super oh, sticker. and they just sent me something, some really cool information on what they do. Cool. And, uh, but first things first, thank you, Romania yeah. Animal Rescue, Inc. Big shout out. Big shout out. Um... For a 10 spot, I appreciate it. You know, we're crowdfunded, so we try to make a big deal when people contribute because yeah. we need people to contribute. Yeah. <laughs> we need all the love and support we can get. It's that or Cars for Kids ads yeah. every couple yeah. of minutes. So um, glad we can provide. Yeah. Essentially, we're ad-free, although I think uh, YouTube drops some stuff in there along the way. But uh, we're crowdfunded anyway. The yeah. Um, you know what I liked about Cars for Kids and those ads? Nothing. Uh, no, I, I, uh, I thought it was interesting that they tried to change the arrangements. You know, Tony, like you, you mm -hmm. were bored up on a couple of different radio stations. And you must hear it a lot. And Kim, you worked, yes. you know, at, at KGO. They changed, like, some of them were like acoustic, you know, uh, cars yeah. for kids. Some of them were the big band cars for kids. Some, some of them were the, rock the and kids. Roll. Yeah, yeah, some of them were the rock and roll. All equally horrifying. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They never really got past it. But 
you know, give the devil their due, it yep. does work. Yeah. Yep. So uh, they're not Google glasses, B Dub. I think they're these are truly meta glasses. They're the Ray Ban mm. meta glasses. Yeah. So um, anyway, no cars for kids. Well, Gil, thank you. We yeah. will try to keep cars for kids out of the. Uh, picture but i'm just saying that the exchange that we've made is the contributions that we have to ask for occasionally so harry magnet thanks for saving me from cars for kids commercials yeah exactly (laughs) big shout out big shout out Mm -hmm. so covid the flu and rsv on the rise in california everybody congratulations (laughs) it's another triple demic coming very exciting you know, if you're going to do a demic, make it the triple demic. Here's the story. The respiratory virus, that's what the RSV is, right? Is just the part of these other things that are essentially respiratory viruses. Obviously, COVID-19 has some inflammatory elements and some attendant issues that are not just exclusively involving the lungs. Uh, but Health officials are renewing calls for residents to get vaccinated in hopes of reducing potential pressure on health systems across the state. Conditions nowhere near as daunting as last autumn when there was also a triple-demic, but still data showing that new COVID and flu hospital admissions are increasing in California. Fresno County forced to take steps last month to stem a tide of patients arriving into the emergency rooms. Ambulances were instructed to not transport patients to hospitals if they are stable and not suffering from an emergency. They were so overloaded. Nationally, RSV season is in full swing. The flu season is just beginning across most of the country, but accelerating fast. Low levels of COVID relatively, but COVID is still the primary cause of new respiratory hospitalizations and deaths. About 15,000 hospitalizations and about 1,000 deaths every single week. That's from the director of the CDC. The good news is that if Trump becomes president, we just forget about COVID. We wipe it away. We deny it. And uh, life is good again. You know, back to America, the way it should be. No problems. Does it give you pause at all, knowing that these things are on the rise, to not attend holiday gatherings? No. Like, I've been invited to a couple of Christmas parties, right? And so you go to the Christmas party, and no one's wearing a mask anymore, and so you're all inside with people that you don't maybe not normally interact with, and so maybe you're exposed to all these other things. I mean, mm. at some point, we have to go back to the parties and not worry about it, but I still have worry. Yeah, well, I mean... Uh, and this is their new hoax. Uh, yeah, I am not worried the way I was. I used to be yeah. pretty preoccupied with it. Not anymore. Mm-hmm. That said, uh, congregate. look, I'm going on a cruise. <laughs> mm-hmm. That yeah. thing is like a floating Petri dish. Are you kidding? Yeah. It's crazy. So I can't really worry too much about it. I got my flu shot, but I haven't gotten my COVID shot yet. Maybe oh, I can maybe I it. can slam down to Walgreens and get the COVID shot mm-hmm. before the boat takes off. But um anyway, it's a look, one reason they're saying that um since RSV was pretty severe last autumn, there might be some carryover immunity if you want to sort of uh, that was from your boyfriend Dr. Peter Chin Hong, he oh, said that. I love him. He's the best. So, mm, dreamy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and of course, uh, also quoted in the article is uh, Emil Schopenhauer, Schopen- 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 <laughs> the third, who's done a lot of work in it. Uh, and um, they look at wastewater now increasingly. And if you're in Southern California, LA County wastewater, uh, 24% of last winter's peak, but that's up. 13% week to week. So that's why they're saying, hey, maybe an issue here. Anyway, that's the story on that. I uh, urge everyone to do what you think is right for your body. You know, as I say, I grabbed that flu vaccine, but I haven't gotten the COVID vaccine yet. I still have to get pneumonia vaccine and the shingles vaccine. I've got so like a, I've been derelict in getting that done. One day when you were off KFIing, 
I had mm-hmm. Dr. Peter Chin Hong on the Mark Thompson show. And he said the good thing today or this this year is that, you know, how sometimes they pick the wrong flu virus, the wrong strain in the vaccine. He said the good thing is this year they picked the right strain of the flu and they picked the right strain of COVID. So if you get those COVID and the flu vaccine, you're pretty you're very protected this time around because it's the it's what's yeah. going around is what's in the vaccine. Yes, um, I I did watch the show even though I wasn't. Uh, oh, you watched on the, show the show when you're not here. Oh, okay. I went back and watched it. Uh, did you? And That's nice. Yeah, I did. Yeah. What? Yes. Well, yeah. I wanted to see how Kim did with it. I thought she was terrific, of course. Mm-hmm. And Dr. Peter Chin Hong, <laughs> I was surprised that you booked him because I'd asked that he be booked for weeks and weeks and weeks, and yet he wasn't booked all that time. But then, oddly, when you had to fill in, he came That's right on and was booked right away. For myself. That's yeah, exactly I'm just, right. Yeah, I'm just an odd. <laughs> It's weird how, you know, all of a sudden, bam, got you know, him. Uh, always a complaint. Yep. Was, he, was he or was he not on the Mark Thompson show? Yes, he uh, was. He was, so there is yeah. that. You're right. Okay, all right. The Mark Thompson Show. Everybody's favorite corrupt legislator is gone, George Santos. Sadly. Sayonara, ha- sucker. We have to turn. <laughs> I know, and they're doing a movie about him. I learned that from uh, the uh, Nicky Maduro yes, show this morning. That's right. Um, but... Um, Now we have to turn our uh, attention to another corrupt legislator. And uh, there is another one, believe it or not. I know, it's incredible because there is more than just one corrupt politician on Capitol Hill. I know it's incredible. And I'm talking about Democratic Senator Bob Menendez. Well, you know, he's the guy who was found with all the uh, cash in the uh, pockets of different jackets in his home. The gold bars there. I mean, it was his closet was just a (laughs) a monument to pay to play payoffs of one sort or another. Allegedly. Allegedly. Thank you very much. (laughs) Um, So there he is. Oh, Bob. And now there is word that some of those gold bars that ended up in Bob Menendez's home, they have an interesting background and now the lovely and talented tony will share with us a little bit of that background in this report from the fine people at nbc news is was the scene of the crime an edgewater new jersey penthouse november 2013 22 gold bars stolen from this man millionaire developer fred davies at gunpoint davies was tied to a chair by a gang of four. They stole 176 items in all, including a half million in cash and those gold bars. The suspects were caught that night. Davies later seen in court watching the robbers plead guilty. To get his valuables back, Davies had to certify each item was his, including every one of those gold bars. Each gold bar has its own serial number, Davies explained to the Bergen County Prosecutor's Office. They're all stamped. You'll never see two stamped the same way. A decade later, four of those gold bars with those unique serial numbers were allegedly found by the FBI in the Clifton home of Senator Menendez and his wife, Nadine. Together are worth approximately $150,000. U.S. Attorney Damian Williams showed images of some of the gold bars he said were part of hundreds of thousands in bribes paid to the senator and his wife by Davies and two other New Jersey businessmen. The bank stamps and serial numbers on those gold bars, plain for the world to see. News 4 has now obtained police stolen property logs from the Davies armed robbery case a decade ago. It was on December 13th, 2013, that Davies signature and initials appear on the property release form. And four of the gold bars Davies certified as stolen and then returned to him appear to be an exact match to images of four gold bars included in the bribery indictment. All Uh-oh. of this spells bad news for Senator Menendez because yeah. the chain of custody, it appears, is going to be really easy to prove up. NBC legal analyst Danny Savalos says showing gold bars were given to Robert and Nadine Menendez alone does not prove the crime of bribery. Was there a quid pro quo? Was it in exchange for the senator's official acts or promises of the same. The FBI says the quid pro quo between Senator Menendez and Davies went like this. 
In exchange for cash and gold bars, Senator Menendez would try to use his position to help Davies get favorable treatment from the New Jersey U.S. Attorney's Office, which in 2018 was investigating Davies for bank fraud. Senator Menendez has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing. The allegations leveled against me are just that, allegations. The New Jersey Democrat denies he took cash from Davies, even though prosecutors say testing shows Davies' fingerprints and DNA were on tens of thousands in cash found in the senator's home. For 30 mm. years, I have withdrawn <laughs> thousands of dollars in cash from my personal savings account, which I have kept for emergencies and because of the history of my family facing confiscation in Cuba. When Stop for a second, uh, 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 Tony. First of all, this is, looks really bad for Menendez. I mean, it already looked bad for him, and this makes it look even worse. The second thing is, you know, you can say that at a press conference, and increasingly in America, that's all you need to do because the courts... Um, you know, it's the, pub, the court of public opinion, of course, that's uh, carrying him, you know, the uh, electorate, right? Although if he's broken the law, he will go to jail on this. He, he would go to prison. But um, my point is simply that he'll have to prove what he just said. I mean, you, it's great that you say it at a press conference. You know, for years, for 30 years now, I've taken out thousands of dollars, my wife and I, of course, uh, with uh, history in Cuba. I mean, I get it. In Cuba, they appropriated all of your property. I mean... I get the logic, I get that weak-ass story, but you're going to have to prove that weak-ass story. You're going to have to show us that. So at this point, a press conference ain't going to get you off the hook. And now, with the gold bar matchup story floating, it's I think it's looking tougher and tougher. Remember, Menendez skated once. When was that? In the early aughts, I want to say. Maybe not that long ago, wasn't it? When was the last time Menendez was brought in by the Ethics Committee? Um, check it out, Kim. I think, Google it. Yeah, I think you can find it. Uh, but it, it doesn't really matter. It's just uh, that it's not his first rodeo, and this rodeo may take him down. So uh, that's the latest on Menendez and his uh, gold bars, which appear to have links to those who he might have helped. Yes, liar, liar, your pants are on fire. <laughs> Where's my lie? Did I lose that also? Liar, oh, liar, good, good. your pants oh, are on fire. fire. Yeah. I like the you are a cover-up artist. You know what I mean? It's more uh, you are a cover-up cover artist. artist right. You are a liar. Yeah. Um. Anyway, it is true, right, uh, Kim? That they're going to do a in the roundabout of corruption they're going to do a movie about santos is that what yeah it, they're doing a, a movie they're doing a movie about santos hbo is doing a movie about about santos they didn't list who they've tapped to play him yet but you know part of me thinks oh gosh what a like lifetime original kind of movie that will be but i have to say the story of how he lied and then was elected and then you know dug his heels in and then finally was kicked out it it all is v interesting and will make a good movie yeah you know exactly yeah. right i mean it's a um it's hard to uh, we know the story so well but sometimes it doesn't mm -hmm. matter you want to see the story played out dramatically you know even if it's a story that you know Speaking of Cuba, you saw that that former U.S. diplomat was arrested in Florida and accused of serving as an agent of Cuba, Manuel Roca. Another traitor. He was ambassador to Bolivia for a time, accused of working to promote the Cuban government's interests. He's an alleged traitor, please, Kim, if you would, please. <laughs> I think you're usually a little bit better about that. Yeah, you're right, I am. I uh, will say that... Ch -ch -ch Manuel Roca, 73, arrested in Miami. Criminal complaint. More details about the case are coming. And um, Roca was promoting the Cuban government's interest in this country. So federal law, as you know, says if you're going to do that, you know, you need to register with the Justice Department. There's mm -hmm. a, uh, um, and they are now enforcing that a, a little more uh, stringently than they have in the past. But he's a 25-year diplomat, <laughs> so it's crazy. There he is. There's the uh, there's the seal of the Justice Department. Mm, and for what? 
Crazy. By mm. the way, you'd asked me to check on the Menendez thing, and, and apparently his first brush with the Senate Ethics Committee was uh, in 2018, in his <laughs> after he had a federal indictment then as well. So ah, he's no stranger to the panic, the ethics panel. Yes, I wanted there. That's rich. Uh, yes, we want to do a. That's rich. Um, can you? I knew he had. Done, thank you for checking that. I knew he had uh, had a. You know, mm -hmm. as I say, a little brush with uh, with trouble. Can you rally a that's rich, Tony, for us? I have a pretty good that's rich, and I did promise the boys and girls that I was going to do it, and uh, haven't had a chance to get to it. I didn't get a chance to get to it yesterday, so I want to um, try to get to it today. So without any further delay, we like to, and those of you who are into the show early, will get this little morsel for the holidays, a, um, a special holiday edition of That's Rich. <laughs> Who are they? The top one-tenth of one percent. What are they like? These people are so posh and snobby, they're snobby. That's Rich on the Mark Thompson Show. What would you like, I ask you? Would you like the... I'm going to do them all. Okay, I don't want you to worry. You're not choosing an exclusive. You're simply choosing an order. And I'm going to ask Tony... Tony, I'm going to ask you, you want Kardashians or Bezos first? Mm. Wait a minute. I'm going to make it even mm, harder. <laughs> Bezos it is. Kardashians. Okay. Be okay. How, this is going to be like the optometrist's office or whatever. We uh, tiered that right. one out. Kardashians so out. out. Now it's Bezos or Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Oh. And if you don't answer immediately. Let's see what Bezos is doing. Uh, all right. Thanks, Tony. All right. Bezos it is. Let's do the Bezos story. So Amazon billionaire Jeff Bezos has a $500 million mega yacht, as you know. Yeah. How big is your mega yacht? Not that big. Yeah. Uh, You're his... compensating for something with that big yacht. <laughs> what? Do you really wow. need that big of a yacht? Man, Honestly? That is... Uh... I mean, does that say something about you? I'm just mm -hmm. saying. I'm wondering out loud. Maybe. You know, we could try ignoring it, sir. He is the third richest man in the world. He found out this week that his $500 million schooner was too big to be <laughs> moored with the other private yachts in Port Everglades, Florida, where he wants to moor it. What? Rich yeah. people problems, I'm He's... telling you. The if it's ship, not one which, thing, it's another. <laughs> the ship stands at a staggering 416 feet. It had to be moored with oil tankers and other general container ships. Imagine, oh, the horror. Wait, his yacht is so big it had to go with the tankers? Yes. Wow. A spokeswoman for the port <laughs> said that it's in an area for huge ships. When we have large yachts that don't fit in your typical marina, we fit them where we can elsewhere in the port. Uh, Tony is showing you a couple of pictures of uh, the mega yacht now. It's hard to see, but it is pretty mega, and it's very yacht. The ship is called the Koru. See, it's see, named see it after... there with the cruise ships? <laughs> there yeah. it is in front with the cruise ship and a tanker. <laughs> um, it, um, it left Gibraltar two weeks ago and arrived in Florida this past week. It was parked uh, in the uh, Port Everglades area, which is a major gateway for cruise ships and international trade because South Florida's yachting marinas typically just can't accommodate any boat longer than 400 feet. Inspired by Black Pearl, which is the fictional ship in Pirates of the Caribbean, Koru took three years to build in the historic port near Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And remember... To get it out, we told you the story of how they had to dismantle that bridge to literally get it out. It was too big to go under the bridge. Mm -hmm. So at Bezos' expense, they dismantled the bridge and then remantled the bridge. After uh, that entire episode, he's, it's too big to park here. At nearly twice the length of an Airbus A380... It is the second largest sailing ship in the world, Kim. Only Philippe Stark. Uh, only, only the Philippe Stark designed sailing yacht 
A, as it's called, owned by Russian fertilizer billionaire Andrei Mernichenko, is bigger. Well, then he failed, didn't he? The, uh, well, yeah. I mean, if some other is, guy has a, a yacht bigger than yours, I think, uh, you know. He's sil- a silver medalist, not bad. If I'm Bezos, I'm feeling like that's not good enough. Build no. me a bigger one. No, well, you're very tough, Kim, as we yeah. learned. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I think it's pretty strong as a as yachts go. But This is the guy who is, I mean, just correct me if I'm wrong, who the the drivers for his company are not given breaks, so they have to take their restroom break and go into a bottle, right? Because they, in the, in the trucks and they they have a certain quota in the warehouse. So the workers are just worked to the absolute bone and they're, you know, quitting because they're so exhausted. I didn't know and about these things. They're not this paid is, enough. They're, this you know, is the a, working th- conditions th- are troublesome. This should have been a that's rich story. Wow. I didn't know and, that. And so we're treating the workers this way. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, we have our $500 million yacht. Are you kidding me? This Kim, is they're workers. Outrageous. Okay, that's the reason yeah. you're treating that way. All right, you know, right. you want to, if you want longer breaks, you know, start a company, become a jillionaire, and uh, Work get a your own harder. yacht. Yeah. That's right. Um, the multi billionaire has to pay staff to operate the Koru, the staff that. Kim is talking about the staff that doesn't get a break. (laughs) How much annually does Jeff Bezos have to pay his staff just to operate the Koru? Oh, I don't know. Where? Oh, that's my millionaire. um, So you would need a captain. Yeah. You would need a co-captain because you know the captain has to sleep. You would need housekeepers, a chef. Uh. I'm going to say you have a staff of probably, what, 10 people, maybe? Mm, I think it's more than that, actually. I mean, it's you a huge so? ship. Yeah, I mean, remember, this is the staff for the whole year, year-round. You have more than 10 mm. people year-round to release. Look, even on our show, when Tony can't, you know, we got yeah. Albert and Tony both, you know? I mean, I, I think it's way more than 10. Um, I don't know. Let's just look at, throw up some of the guesses. Let me just see what people are guessing in the chat. And feel free to guess if you're listening in delay, which most people do, I think. Feel free to throw it in there before I tell you the answer. It's I'm just curious what people are guessing. I see 2.3 million. I see 250,000 a month. Can anybody throw up there the um, 500,000 a month, said someone? Pinky says 3.8 mil. Yeah. Uh, Debbie says 30. She thinks 30 people, a staff of 30 people. Okay, fine. Jim says people. it's it's eight hundred ten million. Eight hundred and ten million for the year. <laughs> so it says I think it's like KGO eight ten eight ten million. Oh, you know? I see. Okay. Does anybody have real guesses or is this? Uh, uh, Mackay says eight dollars right. and okay. ten cents. Uh, you know what? We can't. <laughs> Liz have nice says things. ten million. Greg yeah, says right, whatever, fifty well, million. Oh, you gosh. know. I I I. I all right. The actual retail price and the cost of running this ship, the multi-billionaire Jeff Bezos pays his staff on an annual basis to operate the Koru $25 million, everybody. Mm. That's it. Yeah, 25. Donna did say 20, so she was close. Mm. All yeah. right. Well, she'll get full credit then. 20 million a year? Wow. Yeah, 25 million a year. 25 million a year. Um, so um, he also, as you know, uh, is has two... Mansions on Indian Creek Island, the billionaire's bunker, as it's called. That's where Ivanka Trump lives, along with Tom Brady and the guy who owns the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles. So that's what the rich in Florida are doing. Pietro wants to know, no Prime Day deals for that? No? <laughs> <laughs> Meantime, the New Orleans townhouse, once owned by Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, lists in New Orleans... For just uh, over a million dollars. It's a what? lavish New Orleans townhouse once owned by Brangelina. That's it? Uh, you, you Well, let's learn about it. Built in 1828, the sprawling mansion boasts luxury amenities, including a private gym, marble fireplaces, and numerous balconies. I'm kind of with Kim. It seems like it's a low number. I mean, I mean it's a it swanky inter- spot. Is it in the direct path of, a, of flooding or something? Yeah, what's, what's going, going on, on with that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was all part of their real estate portfolio, and then when they broke up, they've had to unportfolio the portfolio. 
Mm. It was purchased in 06. That was the year after the two met. They met on the film Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and the lavish mansion boasts a number of elite amenities, as they call it. It's found in the city's iconic French Quarter neighborhood. It looks oh, it's, nice. It's pretty. Now, remember, it's a townhome in there, okay? So that's not the whole townhouse, I don't think. Um, their neighbors include Beyonce, Jay-Z, Sandra Bullock, and John Goodman. So it's not... Oh, that's pretty. So it's a, it's not a single-family home. It's a, you know, like It's a, a townhome, an, which means uh, technically, I think, that there's... Yeah, right. They share walls with other people. How much in square footage, though, do you get? I mean, uh, hmm. the answer is pretty amazing, I think. Um, what's the square footage, do you think, Kim, of a million-dollar townhouse built in 1828 there in New Orleans? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going 4,200. Yeah, I would think that's a lot but yeah i think that's a what's the square footage for a million dollar townhouse open by i should say owned by brad and angelina the answer is um surprising it's big private home gym crystal chandeliers marble fireplace lavish amenities stunning living room gourmet chef's kitchen and 7700 square feet wow wow that's really um that's big for a million bucks get it's on going, it. it'll sell for more than that that must be the starting price mm. wow extraordinary yeah. uh we're not done no we are not <laughs> the the pictures are now coming out from inside one of the most expensive homes around it's a one billion dollar french chateau beautiful gardens a greek theater an indian palace and art that is worth millions this is more like it <laughs> <laughs> this is your style kim would yeah. you say i mean forget yeah. the million dollar townhouse bring me the billion dollar mansion uh a luxury real estate guru is who this guy is who owns it it's a French chateau valued at a billion dollars. Yeah. Eric Conover traveled to Normandy to tour this lavish Chateau du Champ de Bataille, which is yeah. owned by French architect and interior designer Jacques Garcia. The Baroque estate encompasses more than 300 acres of land, consists of six main structures, the chateau, the gardens, oh, there it is. Tony it looks has, like Versailles, look at yes, that. Yes, Tony is sharing it with you now. It, it does have a Versailles, look, there is the layout. You know, when you need, you know, an updated map just to get to the greenhouse. Wowzers. That is, go back for a second, Tony. Can you go back for just one second? So it's Grotto Indian Palace. So this is an overhead view for those who are just listening and not watching. Grotto Indian Palace. These are separate areas, like huge areas of this place. The Garden, as it's called. The Greek Theater, as it's called. Then the Greenhouse and the Main Chateau. It's, it's stunning. As I say, 300 acres. Okay, then you can let it run now. Thank you. Um, Conover com explained that he uh, teamed up with the French real estate brokerage Barnes International to rent out the Chateau de Champ de Bataille. It's nearly impossible to put a number on the price of the uh, estate, so I guess it now is just rented out for, I don't know, you know. How much what does events. that cost? Um, wow. Now, you want to see who owns it, there is a picture of the guy who owns it. Can you, um, if you go into the article, Tony, you'll find a picture of this guy. His name is, as I say, Jacques Garcia. And he purchased the home. There he is, ladies. He, I don't know if he's single, but um, ladies or guys, I don't know what his, what his deal is. But I'll tell you yeah. something. He is wealthy. More than a century after it was built, the chateau was stormed and the furniture was sold throughout France during the French Revolution. The property went through various owners and even served as a field hospital during World War II. Then in 1992, Kim, Garcia, your future husband, rescued it <laughs> from the rundown chateau it had become and dedicated the past 30 years to restoring it and filling it with priceless oh. art, 
that belong directly to the French royal family. Look at that. It's a labor of love. One billion dollars is what that show t chateau costs. Is he Pretty... selling it? No, he's not selling it. It's just this is actually he's just a renting rare... it out. I think it's just it's rented for different events. And I wonder more how than much anything, it costs to have your wedding there. No one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no one had no one had really uh, I shouldn't say no one but it's very seldom do you see inside it so that's why you wanted to share it this was a rare look inside it and I mean, Tony's got a bunch of different pictures wow. up there it's beautiful that must be the uh the Greek theater yeah wow you get it is married really to the Greek cool. theater you could have your like reception that, at the Indian Palace this looks like where that um um the bachelor no well that too yeah <laughs> but I was thinking um one of the ca uh, uh, captain. Who, what does um, Benedict Cumberbatch play in the superhero movies? Uh, Doctor Doctor Strange? Strange. Yeah, that yeah. looked like the Doctor Strange room where he, where a whole bunch of. Anyway, man, it's it's incredible. nice. <laughs> it's incredible. It, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's a look inside it, and uh, we're glad that we could share it. If you talk about rich, that is mega rich. That is it, soaked in money and luxury. It costs $21,800 to turn on and run all of the fountains on the property. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just the fountains. Well, it takes like a day to go around to all the switches to turn them on. You know, you need, you need a, a semi-staff just for that. But wow. That is really... Um, it's incredible. It is... Uh, would you say... Uh, I, I would say it. I mean, can I say it? There's never been anything like this. <laughs> yes, I think that... I, I, it's fair. Thank you, Jim Slayton, for pointing it out. There's never been it's anything like that. secret doors, too. <laughs> yeah. you got to have secret doors. Uh, that's quite the palace. Holy crap, that's quite the place, says Debbie Constantino. One heck of a uh, luxury hotel, said somebody else. Man, it's spectacular. All right. Glad we could take a little... Uh... <laughs> Steve Becker says, yeah, but good school district? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Steve Becker. That's funny. Listen to uh, this. The you know. it, inside of the Indian of the uh, one of the areas here is filled with statues of Greek gods with mirrors behind them and petrified wood lining the support columns. Yeah, that's the. I think that's the uh, that circular thing that I thought was like yeah. Doctor Strange. There are trees growing through the floor, statues, and a platform with an aerial view of a breathtaking garden. Mm. This place is wild. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, 40 it's bedrooms, five living rooms, two dining rooms in the main house. 40 wow. bedrooms. 40 okay. bedrooms. I mean, you could really have a party. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. All right, that's that's rich for today. More on how the other half lives. These people aren't just rich, they're crazy rich. Next time on the Mark Thompson Show. Yes, smash it like a smash boss. It with your iron rod. Give us a thumbs up in YouTube or wherever you're watching. We appreciate very much your your views, your thumbs up, your smashing it. It all matters. Smash it and with your iron rod. When we come back, we talk to Jefferson Graham. We check out these new meta glasses that he's got, the Ray Bans that can I don't know, they see through you, they video you, they uh see into your soul. There's a, a <laughs> bunch of stuff that they do. And uh, Jefferson Graham will share all of that. The longtime tech writer at USA Today. Then he gave it all up, and now he does Photo Walks TV. He will stop by. Kim's News, and uh, Jeff stops by after that. And then next hour, the great David K. Johnston. Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister. This report sponsored by Tenuta Vineyards in Livermore. Simply say, smash it with your iron rod when you call them and get your 10% off. We'll tell you more in just a moment. 
There's some pretty fierce fighting reported as Israeli forces now push deeper into the southern Gaza area. The United Nations warning that an even more hellish scenario is about to unfold as Palestinian civilians flee the shelling. The UN now estimates about 1.9 million people displaced in that Gaza area. Here in the U.S., college leaders are testifying before Congress about their handling of anti-Semitism on college campuses. The presidents of Harvard, MIT, and UPenn defending their policies during a House subcommittee hearing. In her opening remarks, North Carolina Republican Virginia Fox said the campuses have been ground zero for anti-Semitism following the October attack on Israel by Hamas. Alabama Senator Tommy Tuberville lifting his hold on hundreds of military promotions despite no change in the Pentagon's abortion policy. The Republican senator told reporters today that he'll only block military promotions for four-star generals and officers. Oh, well, that's okay then. This comes after uh, Tuberville's months-long block of senior officer promotions over the Pentagon's policy to reimburse travel for service members seeking an abortion. Several police officers in Virginia are recovering after a home that they were serving a search warrant at exploded and caught on fire. Authorities responded to reports of shots fired Monday night at a residence in Arlington. They learned a suspect had discharged a flare gun about 30 to 40 times from his house into the neighborhood. As they were executing the search warrant, the suspect fired rounds inside the home, which caused the house to explode. The four finalists for the 2023 Heisman Trophy have been revealed. LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels, Ohio State wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr., Oregon quarterback Bo Nix, and Washington quarterback Michael Penix Jr. are vying for the coveted Most Outstanding Player in College Football Award. The winner is well uh, set to be announced at a ceremony on Saturday night in New York. In Oakland, neighbors on edge after a deadly shooting at a 7-Eleven. Some heard the gunfire yesterday afternoon at International Boulevard and Fifth Avenue. Police arrived there to find a man from Antioch who was dead right near a gas pump. It's unclear if anyone was filling up at the time, but investigators stayed on the scene for hours collecting evidence. Uh, Again, this was yesterday in Oakland at a 7-Eleven. 23andMe now says a data breach impacted a lot more of its customers. Monday morning, the genetic testing company said hackers breached the data of only 14,000 users. And by the end of the day, the company said the data of half of its 14 million accounts had been compromised. Meta plans to discontinue cross-messaging between its social media platforms. Sometime this month, Instagram users will no longer be able to message their Facebook contacts. Meta didn't give a specific reason for killing off that feature. Brenda Lee's Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree is just now the third holiday song ever to claim the top spot on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. The 65 years between the song's release and it hitting the number one is the longest climb to the top in the chart's history. Why now? Why that song? The song wrapped up... Nearly 35 million streams sold 3,000 downloads November 24th through the 30th. That, according to a company called Luminate. Wow. Yeah, There's rocking around the Christmas tree. Like this. Wow, that's really not that pretty. it's not a good song, just, you know. Yeah. Anything but Mariah, right? <laughs> yeah. Anything but her. I, don't know. That's I mean, right. I, I understand why everybody's turned on Mariah, but it is a good song. I Mariah's know. Song. Yeah. Here at the Mark Thompson Show, We are massive fans of Tenuta Winery in Livermore. They are the kindest, loveliest people, and they have really good wine. And they support the Mark Thompson Show. So you have all these wonderful things happening. Mm. And so, yes, we support Tenuta Vineyards, and they're giving you a 10% discount here on the Mark Thompson Show. Yeah, they are. So get some Why Are You Yelling Red for the holiday table, possibly some... Hey, which one of you is Mark Thompson Pinot Grigio? Or head out to the winery and they do some taste testing. They have a ton testing. of other things, too. It's just they, that we, those are our... We uh, just, look at those, the 28 yeah. varietals. Yeah, That's those are great. our favorites. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, you, have to, you have to kind of get involved in order to get your 10% off. It's not just a, you know, click a coupon code. Oh, no. You have to call them. 
and say, smash, smash it with your iron rod. Mm-hmm. You tell Rich, smash it with your iron rod. He'll give you the 10% off of whatever it is. All you have to do is call them at uh, 925 925- 699-4576. 925-699-4576 to get your 10% off and enjoy your wine from Tenuta Vineyards. You like it, right, Mark? I love it. Are you kidding? Mm-hmm. I had a I had a bottle over the weekend. I had another bottle, a half a bottle last night. Oh my. Of the well, we had it red? because we were talking about the cruise and other stuff mm. and then problems and blah, blah, blah. So it just makes everything go down. And there was a great Monday night football game on last night. And I really love that. I don't know. I just, um, I love their wine. And as I told you, I got the sparkling wine, which I really like as well. So um, there's a lot right with Tenuta. So mm-hmm. get the 10% off. And it's in the beautiful Livermore Valley. If you want to take a cruise out there, if you're in the Bay Area, if you take a cruise out there. But they're good people. And we appreciate their support of the show. So Absolutely. I'm Kim McAllister. This is The Mark Thompson Show. with your iron rod I did everything right and they indicted me I think I'm the most honest human being perhaps that God ever created someone did this to spoil our Christmas all right I'm loving it let's do it my uh, my week is not complete without a visit from uh, my pal Longtime tech writer for USA Today, he dumped him, dumped him like a, like an athlete who decided to get his number into the lineup on a Super Bowl team. He moved into his own thing. That's right. See you later, USA Today. You're in the rear view. Now he's on YouTube with PhotoWalks TV. He still showcases a lot of great technologies for us and, of course, all of the great trips he's taken and ways to photograph. He is the great Jefferson Graham. (laughs) Look at you, too cool for school, man, with the glasses. Uh, Now, those are the meta glasses, are they not? They are. And if I go like, is it right here? Mm -hmm. I'm now recording. Can you tell? Now, that's what this is. The can you tell part is actually interesting because Kim reminds me that they had a red daughter maybe it was tony one of you reminded me that there's a red dot that lets people know you're being recorded right now do they get rid of that i think it's a white dot let's oh, okay let's but there's something on there yeah uh we'll do it again oh there it is yeah the white dot it's okay white dot and <laughs> that's pretty is, cool man yeah, there is. is nobody in their right mind you're walking down the street would have any idea that you're recording them no. sure sure yeah. so uh tell me what the virtues are and the drawbacks um of the well I mean, first, first of all, all they, they've been out for a, uh, the one we're talking about have been out for a while. What was this is a better iteration I take of uh, they've been out for a while, but I had lunch with a friend of mine who showed up wearing them and I said, hmm, that's pretty good. And he was shooting video and and I thought it was fun. And if anybody should have them, it'd be me uh, because I like to shoot video all the time. So I bought them. It was three hundred dollars, but. $50 off on Black Friday. So I picked them up for 250 bucks. I just got them. And uh, they're they're fun. I mean, you're picking up some interesting, fun clips. Uh, the, the good part is that you can pick up clips that you wouldn't normally get. Um, uh, I have a clip for you today that you could show off that will show you uh, some of the things that I could do that I just normally wouldn't get. All right, Tony, and- share a little bit of that clip if you would, please. Jefferson Graham with my new Facebook Meta Ray-Ban video glasses. Pretty cool, huh? I'm going to walk around a little bit. I'm going to admire this beautiful guitar. Look, there's a guitar. And then I'm going to walk around the room. I only have 60 seconds to do it. We have a beautiful guitar here from Portugal. We have a nice new Yamaha piano. Now we have a bass, a bass vio, as my grandfather Dave used to call it. Should we play a little bit? Get that POV look, yeah. Hmm. 
Right. Thank you for I could I, I shoot my fingers. I could shoot my fingers playing the bass by just looking down. And sure. That was kind of fun. Right. It's kind of fun. Uh, I'm it's just fun. wondering its utility. It's just it's really a fun gadget. It seems to me. It's a fun gadget for those of us who like to make videos. Uh, you know, my, my challenge was that. Mark, you said to me, do you have a picture of yourself in the glasses? And I said, how am I going to do that? Got to do the mirror selfie for that, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it worked, that worked pretty well. Um, I was hoping that my walking shot would be smoother, but it's not. So that's a problem. I think you'll do your best, your best work standing in position, maybe talking to somebody that's standing in front of you. Th it, so it needs to be stabilized the way the iPhone is stabilized, even though there's yeah. some flaws in that stabilization. Uh, Kim yeah. was on for a second, and she's not to come back because uh, Jefferson Graham. The McAllister family finds itself in possession of the very cool gadget yeah. that we can't quite see what that it's is. The, oh. It says Ray-Ban Meta. It was, yeah. we, won, we won it. It hasn't been opened. And I don't want to open it because I don't think we need it. So I oh. think I want to give it away or get rid of it in some some way. I, well, the way is you sell it. I mean, that's what you do, yeah. Kim. You got. I think I mean, your son would have a lot of fun with it. Really what do you? That's I mean, the problem. That's exactly why she doesn't want to keep it. But what's the point of it? You just video record stuff. That's all it's good for. That's what it's for. You know, you can you can wear them as sunglasses too. You can wear them as sunglasses, and as you're walking down the street. You, there are actually speakers, speakers in here, and you can listen to music and you can talk. Oh, that's so, cool. Is it good quality video? I mean, is it? It's better than I imagine. Now, I was one that had the Snapchat glasses, what, four years ago, five years right. ago when they came out, and they were terrible. Yeah. The, this video was pretty good. I mean, you just ran it. You just ran so it. So is it something different than my phone can do? What's the point? The point is <laughs> hands-free. And uh, uh, I did I shots. Love Kim. Uh, yeah, I don't get I it. I mean, so what is it? Just shoot video? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's a video. I mean, yeah, video. Uh, I saw. What, you, you, what, how is that different? Can I shoot video uh, now? Okay, you remind me, me of my this. mother talking let, let about any <laughs> advancement at all. I don't how get it. Is, how much does it cost to buy Ray Ban glasses? Generally, why do you need a remote control? Can't you just get up and change the channel? Uh, yeah, okay, mom. But see, don't that, you? Now yeah, you're being. I, 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 the benefit of a remote control is understood. But if I already <laughs> have a device that takes sufficient video, then why do I need to push a button on my sunglasses? Hands-free, hands-free, uh, different point of view. Uh, yeah. You know, when, you know, I don't know if the audience knows this, but Kim and I met last week in the, in the beautiful hamlet of Petaluma. Yeah. I could have gotten a shot of us saying hi. Oh, I yeah. didn't well. get that. Yeah, I yeah. could have Well, I mean, to Kim's point, you could also have gotten the shot with a camera, with your phone. Yeah. Oh, well, I could I mean, have, That's what well, selfies, you know, prove, I, that there no, are other no, ways. No, I mean, getting out of the car and saying, hey, Kim. Yeah. You yeah. know. No, a, I, I God see forbid we need that shot. I mean, <laughs> what? Okay, but well, look at who Close you're interviewing. Close up of me coming in for a hug? What? That's right. Look at who you're interviewing. I do these shots. I like yeah. to have them. The more, the better. You know, there's a shot that's used in mostly every interview when um, the subject comes in and the interviewer, the TV interviews, and the interview says hi and they shake hands. That's run in most most interviews, but you have to tell the camera person to get that shot. Well, now I can get yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I, I will say this. There is a cool aspect to that point of view and so I love that there is a point of view there. You killed my buzz a little bit when you said that it's shaky. Like if you're walking and it's shaky, so you don't really have a tracking yeah. shot, you don't have like a steady cam shot, that is what they need to do. When they upgrade it without the shake, then I would consider it. But okay, otherwise- well, I'll, I'll work yeah. a little harder on my on my walk. And now the, all the shots are vertical, they're all made for social media, and, right. which I don't like, but that's the way it is. But it, sure. but it's really easy. And, and to they don't have the shorts. And you're saying that there is no adjustment, meaning there is no option to do it apart from ver vertical. No, it's all vertical video. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, it's it's still cool, and I'm really glad you shot stuff. But I, I would love them to let let's stay in touch on this. I'm curious whether you can smooth out the. Yes, you know, the I'm going to do a full stuff. length review. And yeah. uh, and what's going we'll, on we'll... in Photo Walks TV, sir? Anything, Photo Walks uh... TV. I took a little visit to the city of San Francisco last week. To see we, how yeah. to see how rough the town was after mm. you know I hadn't been back since uh, my camera gear was stolen, yeah. and I will reveal all uh, this weekend. 
Oh, I see. Well, um, so we will not. Uh, you're also, you have to get corrective lenses for the frames as well, says Mo. Well, if you need them, if you need them. Well, I mean, there's no need to lord it over us that you don't. You have perfect vision. I mean, I uh, don't. Uh, you wear contacts? No, I don't. You literally don't have any kind of correction for your eyes? No, I have reader glasses that I wear sometimes. Okay, but you don't need any kind of corrective lenses on your eyes day Sorry. to day, hour to hour. <laughs> Sorry. It's just amazing. I mean, you're some kind of freak. Nobody's ever, ever heard anything like it. Nobody, thank you for saying that. We've never heard anything. I have never heard of something. There's never been anything like this. Thank you. There is nothing in, in our, our history, history that, that quite compares, compares to, to this. this. I've never seen anything like, like this. this. never seen anything like it before. All right. Jefferson Graham, we love hey, you. Be, Photo hey, walks before, I, before we go, can yes. I play one quick little song? One quick no. little song. No, one no. quick one. We'll just go out on a tune. It's that time of the year, and you know I'm good at TV themes, but I also know... Jefferson Graham, Photo Walks TV, Mary, Mary, happy, happy, and um, I look forward to uh, our next, I'm going to be away for the rest of the month, but um, Kim will visit with you every Thursday. We love it. So thanks for the for How about great Tuesday? Year. How about on Tuesday? I mean Tuesday, whatever. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> whatever day it is. Uh, yes. But we adore you. Thank you. How about it for Jefferson Graham, everybody? Yeah. There's never been anything like it. Never been anything like it. All right. Jeff, be well. We'll see you soon. Happy holidays. The Mark Thompson Show. How about that Jefferson Graham? He's always got some new thing. Kim yeah, he, kind of um, knocking the slats out from under him, though, on... Uh, well, I just don't understand why I need utility it. Utility of it all. I mean, it's nice to have won it, but I wouldn't have paid for it. Not a red cent. <laughs> Not even. All right. Uh, Kim's it's, You know news. what that is? That's mm. a re-gift is what that is. <laughs> Merry Christmas. That's just somebody Somebody d does really well with that re-gift, re you know. Um, Kim's news and um, then, uh, I don't know what this is, Tony. This is like a Christmas thing. It's long, though. I'm What's just trying Christmas to think. What's a Christmas thing? All right. I have a Christmas, like, break music. You know what I mean? Oh, I Let's like see, that, Hang on though. a second. We'll all decide whether we want to hear the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know if I hear it. <laughs> it's a there little dark, go. I think. I don't know. It sounds superhero, doesn't it? This Christmas. <laughs> it's going to take more than Santa to save the world this Christmas. Superman returns. It doesn't it's just a little it's a little superhero it's like, thing. reminds me of a from a was it remember the movie scrooged uh that that's oh, yeah. like their fake santa movie right with with, with yeah. uh, lee majors sort of it's like right, silent right, night right, right. That's it's, right. it's a very action <laughs> santa with right. guns and... <laughs> yeah oh my god yeah not the type of christmas music that i like says randy all right very good. All right, Kim's News and the great David K. Johnston next. Smash the like button, Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. Yes, good afternoon to you. It is the Mark Thompson Show, and this report is sponsored by Coachella Valley Coffee at CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. Love it, love it. Israeli forces are now conducting ground assaults into the southern Gaza area as Hamas leaders are thought to be hiding there. The United Nations warned that an even more hellish scenario is about to unfold as the campaign in that region continues. The Israel-Hamas war now in its 60th day. A new poll shows Republican presidential hopeful Nikki Haley leading President Biden 
in a 2024 matchup. This is from a Messenger Harris poll. It puts Haley four points ahead of the current president in a hypothetical head to head race. The survey shows Donald Trump with a massive lead over Haley, though, in the Republican primary and a seven point lead over President Biden in the general election. Again, that's a Messenger Harris poll for whatever stock you put in polls. A Bitcoin rally might be underway. Some speculators are predicting Bitcoin could reach $100,000 in 2024. Bitcoin rallied more than 120% this year. It's currently trading above $41,000. The crypto industry has been hit with a litany of issues from the collapse of coins and projects to bankruptcies and criminal trials as well. But people aren't done investing yet, apparently. Here comes Bitcoin back again. And litany's a ding word. I'll take it. Ding it, ding it. Several police officers in Virginia are recovering after a home they were serving a search warrant at exploded and caught fire. Authorities responding to reports of shots fired Monday night at a residence in Arlington. They learned a suspect had discharged a flare gun multiple times from his house. They were executing a search warrant. The suspect apparently fired rounds inside the home, which touched off an explosion, blew the whole place right up. The wealth of middle class and lower income Americans grew at a faster rate than high earners early in the pandemic. The median wealth of lower income households shot up 101 percent between December of 2019 and December of 2021, while the middle class enjoyed a 29 percent increase. Upper income households saw their net worth rise by 15 percent. There is a Chicago teenager that has earned his doctorate. 17-year-old Dorothy, or her, I should say, Dorothy Tillman has already has her high school diploma, her bachelor's, a double master's, and now her doctor's doctorate from Arizona State University. Wow. She's 17. She says her goal is to create a space for the sake of future generations. Isn't How's that, that for literacy, yeah, that, it, Just right? as you're getting bummed wow. out about the next generation or this generation or all generations... Here a comes Dorothy like with her do- with her master double masters, her bachelor's and her doctorate. <laughs> wow. Rock on, Dorothy. Where where is it, where is she in the Harris poll? I guess she's <laughs> I not old enough. Know. She's not old enough to Yeah. No. This report is sponsored by Coachella Valley Coffee. Uh, we love the coffee. We love the tea. It's super amazing and you get 10% off exclusively for being a, a Mark Thompson show listener. So, uh you can put Mark T at checkout and get your 10% off. The mint teas are amazing, both the Moroccan mint and the I think it's ginger mint. They're the top sellers and they're really good. Tried the vanilla, uh, tried the hibiscus tea as well. All so good. I know you like the Earl Grey mark. Earl Grey because I'm sort of yeah. you know, straightforward that way. You but are. it's all good. And, and Courtney has a bunch of the different ones mm-hmm. too. She sort of does what you do. She varies it up. But it's all really great. And of course, you know, all this stuff, sustainable. Mm-hmm. It's a remarkable place to uh, have a relationship with. I'm so proud that they're on our show. Coachella yeah. Valley Coffee.com and definitely get the 10% off at checkout. Mark T will get you discount on anything on the website. Including the holiday blend coffee, which I see you used to have one on the shelf and now it's gone. It's, it's so you now, must have it's now gone. opened it. It's it. in use yes. in the kitchen. Yeah. The last yeah. one is there. Yeah, exactly. Good stuff. I'm Kim McAllister. This is the Mark Thompson Show. <laughs> They had to close down an entire radio station to silence him. And now, he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Thompson. The Mark Thompson Show. How about it for uh, the great Pulitzer Prize winner, best-selling author, and uh, brilliant mind when it comes to government, when it comes to taxes, the law, international lecturer, so proud that he is part of our show regularly. David K. Johnston, everybody. Hello, Mark. Hello, sir. Thank you for being here. You know, we had a viewer-listener request for you, David K. Johnston, and uh, I'll tell you, it's um, from... Uh, Jeff, he says, maybe ask David K. Johnson, uh, Johnston about this. He is recognized, he's talking about you, globally as an expert in U.S. tax code. This is a story about the Supreme Court hearing a case that will essentially uh, cut off, at least as one of the effects of the case, uh, a bunch of revenue if the Supreme Court rules that this tax 
on income, again, I'll use it in quotes, you'll explain perhaps um, yeah. all of this, uh, if, if it's, it's deemed not taxable, quote, income, it will cut off a tremendous revenue stream into the U.S. government. Can you tell, this is, a, they're, they're hearing this case this week. Um, I believe today, but I may be wrong. Yeah. <clears throat> um, this is actually a very simple matter, and let me give a little history about it. The issue is, can you tax wealth? If you own a home or a building, you pay property taxes. That is a tax on wealth. When our uh, constitutional government started, remember we live in the second American Republic, the first one had no power to tax, so we overthrew it for the specific purpose, primary purpose of being able to tax ourselves. The very first tax imposed by our Congress was a property tax. And as a result, by the way, we have these fabulous records of every single farm and barn and um, uh, uh, store building in the country and who owned it. And at the time, that made a lot of sense because more than 90% of people were farmers. And how many acres of land you have, how big your barn is, basically tell you how much income you can have. Uh, now, the issue here is that a couple who had put $50,000 into a business in India were required to pay a $15,000 tax under Donald Trump's tax overhaul. This was a giveaway to corporations that had put $3 trillion that could have been invested here creating jobs and wealth. They had stuffed it overseas into corporate mattresses. I mean, it really was no different than if you take your paycheck, cash it, and go put the cash under your in your mattress. And um, they got an incredible deal. Instead of paying the 35% corporate tax rate, if you um, under this law, you paid, I believe it was 5%. It may have been technically slightly different, four and a half or something. Uh, but you paid 5% roughly, so you got this enormous discount on your tax bill, and you did not have to bring the money home. You could leave it overseas. Well, this couple uh, did not sell anything, so their investment, which they now say is worth $400,000, is tied up in this Indian company. And they're actively involved in the company. The husband has been the chairman of the board. He's gone to India at the company's expense. He also engaged in a very strange transaction with them. He loaned them $60,000 for 90 days, and they paid him back 12% interest. The money didn't go anywhere. It sat in a bank account. And, of course, what this suggests is that he was getting a dividend without it being taxable or some other scam that's just mentioned briefly in, in the records. But let's assume they're as pure as the driven snow. Their argument is we did not sell our stake. Therefore, we had, do not have a realized gain. Just as imagine you bought um, Microsoft stock when it started out at 17 cents, and now it's worth almost 300, and you have one share and you haven't sold it. When you sell it, you'll owe tax. <clears throat> so uh, if this succeeds, it will really mess up the tax code it will force major revisions. And given the makeup of Congress right now, those revisions are not going to be kind. Uh, if the couple succeeds in their case, it also shows yet again that the majority of the Supreme Court, well, they all said, oh, we believe in stare decisis. That is, that's a settled matter. Unless there's compelling reasons, we should not overturn it. Nonsense. They, they, are, they are what Republicans used to call activist judges. And it could be a real big problem. So, you know, given that this guy got a break, if paying the 15000 saves him from higher taxes in the future, uh, I think this case is a setup. And to some degree, I wonder whether uh, people who wrote the actual Trump tax law were planning something like this. I mean, they're just devious enough to do this sort of thing. Now, Neil Kotchall, who many people see often on MSNBC, who is a brilliant lawyer, he is on the side of this couple and others. He's a very highly paid lawyer for corporate interests in Washington, and he's filed an amicus brief, which I was reading when we started, um, basically saying, no, Congress cannot tax wealth. And frankly, nowhere in the other briefs that I've skipped through this morning do I see anybody raising the simple 
fundamental truth that the first tax under our constitution was a wealth tax, a property tax on farms and businesses and homes. So the, the underlying argument that Congress can't tax is absurd because the evidence we have is that the people who adopted the constitution adopted a wealth tax right out of the box and there was no controversy about it. The Biden administration, interestingly enough, David K. Johnston, is defending this Trump era law. In 2017, Trump signed this uh, this tax legislation, which is at issue here, the tax overhaul package, right? That was the one that was signed. It was a tax cut across the board. <laughs> Well, and tax cut for people like Donald and rich people. Right, not to right. It reduced corporate uh, tax rates, of course, but it did have a one-time tax on earnings of U.S. shareholders in certain foreign com uh, companies. So, so this is what you're talking about. That this, you know, yeah. this couple owns this uh, business in India. And but, but so, Mark, don't, don't don't miss something here. It's very important. Every time you buy a pair of Nike shoes, you know they're made in Vietnam. They're put on a boat. They're sent to America. Most of the profits for those shoes are moved offshore by Nike. They charge a royalty for that swoosh, you know, the thing they paid $35 for that's so famous. Uh, and that royalty is paid to a Nike enterprise in a tax haven. And so they remove that money from the United States. They, it becomes untaxed profits. And this was a giveaway to them. Hey, pay a 5% tax and we'll forgive you for the trillions of dollars you siphoned out of the country. Uh, the, certainly the, the people who stand to benefit from this case don't want you to think that way. Uh, yeah, it, it's so the justices, it, it does, maybe it's just my own cynicism at this point, but I mean, I'd sign on to your notion, which is this was choreographed. I mean, this is deliberate. This is a, a real attempt to get out from under a lot of the tax bill that, you know, high end, uh, corporate owners may be dealing with. Um, and, you know, there's, Mark, Mark, there's a whole industry of making mistakes. Uh, I wrote in several of my books about how uh, Conrad Hilton left his fortune to the starving children of the earth, and his son Baron literally snatched it from these poor children's mouths. He didn't get all of it because I wrote about it, but the way he was able to do that is he persuaded his father's lawyer that there was a mistake in the will. In fact, the will was perfect. Uh, underlying uh, advice, do not take tax advice from your son-in-laws or your son's <laughs> lawyer, uh, especially if it's going to make them richer. And so it, it, we've had other cases, uh, examples uh, in the last 40 years of where a little Trojan horse was plunked into the tax code that nobody noticed. So oh, I, I, I want to clear your audience, I don't have any proof of this. But gosh, look at this. And a $15,000 tax, and it went right to the Supreme Court. They were so it, it, eager to hear this. Exactly. One would think, well, they're big corporate owners. And no, no, no. It's $15,000 at play here. During arguments on Tuesday, some of the justices repeatedly appeared to be having a proxy debate over a wealth tax or taxing a person's assets rather than their income. This is what you were saying, David K. Right. Johnston. President Biden, for instance, has proposed a billionaire's tax that would apply to unrealized gains on assets that have increased in value on American households worth more than a hundred million dollars. Again, if you if you have households worth more than a hundred million, you'd pay it. But uh, Justice Samuel Alito and those members of the court pressed the lawyer for the Biden administration uh, to explain the impact of accepting her position. So the Supreme Court seems to be wanting to uh, apply law here, David, that will have a ripple effect throughout the U.S. economy. You know, right. Um, um, exactly. And understand, I don't like the idea of a wealth tax uh, because uh, if you think if you're only, if people only own stocks and bonds, we can price them. But, you know, you own a business. Well, is it worth X or is it worth 10 X? And there are lots of different ways to measure things. And you can appear to the tax man. Donald Trump is the most famous person in the country for this. He poses as a pauper to the tax man. <laughs> And to his bankers, he's Midas. Um, so I don't think they're an efficient or effective way to tax people. What we should be doing, in my view, is whenever you sell, that is realize, you got to pay your taxes. When you die, you have to pay your taxes that you didn't have to pay all during your lifetime because taxes on capital 
are actually under the law a tax on the right to transfer the ownership. So you give stock to your children or grandchildren, you sell shares in your in a company in the market. You are transferring that property to someone else and the government takes a tax off of it. And if we if we got rid of the estate tax, which also taxes the price you paid for it, that is the basis and just had capital gains at death, the tax system would be simpler and it would be elegant. Um, and I'm reminded here of when I was at a forum in Washington, D.C. years ago with, among other people, the uh, guy at the Chamber of, U.S. Chamber of Commerce who was in charge of tax policy. And I said, all right, I have a proposal for you. We're just going to repeal the corporate income tax. What do you guys think? He says, well, I don't know. I have to see the proposal. I said, I just told you the proposal. The corporate income tax is hereby repealed. It's one sentence. Well, I don't know. We'd have to see the proposal. And he kept, you know, saying, <laughs> and finally I said, I said to the, to the audience watching this, because it was a broadcast like yours is, I said, people should know that I've proven, and everyone at this table knows it, that many corporations appear to pay the corporate income tax, but actually they profit off it and they just have to shave off a piece of the profit and give it to the government. And I've explained the rules under which they're allowed to do this and how Warren Buffett is the greatest master of it in the country after uh, Apple and uh, Microsoft. Um, and, you know, of that's course, such a great the example. That's a magnificent of keeping example. Keeping the corporate income tax because it's a profit center for the biggest companies. It isn't right. for little companies like the one I used to have, but for big companies, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, the other thing that's going on here, and then I'll move on to a little Trump news because there is uh, there is some Trump news. Um, and there was a pretty big rumble in um, a couple of op-eds that ran, and I wanted to get your take on them. David Rivkin, though, who is arguing this case, uh, representing the Moores, it's this couple of the Moores, right. Mr. and Mrs. Moore, uh, co-authored two favorable opinion pieces in the Wall Street Journal this year based on interviews with Justice Sam Alito. Because of that, Senate Democrats are calling for Alito to recuse himself from this tax case, but it doesn't appear that he's going to be doing that. The likelihood that Sam Alito will recuse himself, which he would have to do if he were on any other court uh, in this case, is about uh, the same as Clarence Thomas becoming an honest man. <laughs> All right, now to... Uh... Now to the uh, the. I come from regular stock. Oh, yes, uh, Clarence Thomas, the regular stock guy. Um, now to this situation with Trump and some of the rumblings that have come out of one particular op-ed piece in the Washington Post gained some real virality. You know, I mean, this is this really um, it was alarming, and I have to say the argument was cogent. It was essentially that. The Trump dictatorship is coming. It's inevitable. And in fact, I think the op-ed's called, and we should stop pretending. And uh, the essential elements are that Trump is way ahead of the field. He will win the Republican nomination. This whole idea of Nikki Haley's getting Coke money and, you know, that the institutional money uh, is against Trump. All, it doesn't matter. He's 40 points ahead of the rest of the field. And they want him in. His supporters are... Uh, Died in the wool supporters. They're not going anywhere. Uh, Biden's support seems to be siphoned off by doubt, by those who aren't voting, by third party. Anyway, and that Trump has stated essentially and put in place around him people who are poised to weaponize the Justice Department and to go after his enemies. And people like uh, General Flynn who I think shouldn't even be taking a government pension anymore, this guy is, a, is a right. absolutely scary, will slowly put in place a Christian theocracy that uh, Trump doesn't care about. He only cares about feathering his own nest and will likely, again, change this nation forever. And, he, and, the, and the, again, op-ed piece, and then I'll shut up, essentially says this is going to happen and there is almost no way to stop it because... Trump has additionally taken over the courts, and the courts are going to help embolden right. this narrative. So if Donald Trump gets to the White House, I think that is exactly correct. It is the end of our democracy. We are going to see concentration camps, and all dictatorships lead down the road to firing squads. And, you know, I, I said eight years ago, you know, things go badly here. I'm going to get, I was on a radio interview. I'm going to get shot in the second round. And two of my daughters who were at the house started tittering. And I, after I got off the radio show, I said, what, what is it you think is funny? 
They said, Dad, did you actually say you get shot in the second round? I mean, you, you have to you, you always say you're an optimist. Eight kids, you have to be an optimist, but boy, that's more optimistic than we. <laughs> they think, so you think that, you'll make the first round. Okay. Yeah, they he, think you'll make the first yeah, round. Go ahead. Gets, if he gets elected, you know, kiss your liberty goodbye. And even if you think, well, I'm with Donald, I'm a white Christian nationalist. No, you're in as much danger as anybody else. Stalin killed people all around him. Hitler did. Pol Pot did. That's what dictators do. They have to kill people around them because they can't trust anybody once they start killing people and they have to start killing people right off. Now, I don't, I think that we can, in fact, stop Donald Trump. Number one, if you looked at the polls at this point in Barack Obama's uh, first term, he had no chance of getting back to the White House. The same was true of Bill Clinton. Uh, and so you can't rely on the polls. The polls also are, have a response rate, people who will pick up the phone and take the, the uh, poll, of less than 1%. And John Geraci, who's a well-known pollster, lives here in Rochester, who wrote the book Poll, P-O-L-L, all caps, hyphen, arised, polarized. Uh, he says, you know, you just, you, can't, you get a less than 1% response rate, you do not have a random sample. In fact, because they mostly call landlines, it's a population that skews older. I, you know, I have a landline. I don't know. I literally don't. None of my children have a landline, and I don't think I know anybody among my students because I ask them each semester. I can't recall anybody ever saying they personally have a landline. Some would say my parents have a landline. So you're getting a skewed base. Secondly, Joe Biden is about as exciting, you know, as watching grass grow. I, I no question about that. He is not charismatic like Donald Trump. On the other hand. Watch what's happening in the economy. Rents are starting to fall, and that's going to show up in the inflation data starting next month. Car prices are falling. Uh, my electric car that I could have sold a year ago for $4,000 more than I paid for it, and I'd had it for a year already, it's now worth half of what it was. Um, uh, many food prices are relaxing. Gasoline prices have dropped dramatically, though that can change very quickly um, uh, because of the war in um, Ukraine and other issues. Um, well, even the Saudis are trying to raise the price of yeah, oil. Yeah, the Saudis and the Russians are working together to raise the price of oil because they're one-note economies. They don't have anything but oil. Sure. Uh, Biden, well, this is bad for the environment. We now have record oil production in the U.S. under Biden, and he's opened up the floodgates for more oil. So, you know, Biden is a... a, a competent, accomplished politician. He is the first president since LBJ, or maybe arguably Jerry Ford, who was just a placeholder, who knows how Washington works. We had all these outsiders, right? Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, um, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, George H.W. Bush, and especially Donald Trump. They're, they're outsiders. They don't know how to run Washington. Biden knows how to do it with a five-vote majority. He got these huge pieces of legislation through, um, do not undercount him. Secondly, Biden is holding back. He is not out there right now fighting and contending with Donald Trump, I think for a very obvious reason. He wants, when he goes after Trump, for it to be news. He doesn't want people to say, oh, yeah, Biden's been saying that for a year. Well, not news. I'm not going to put that in the front page. They're going to unleash on Donald Trump. And then finally, the polls actually show the support for Trump beyond his, you know, a rabid dog, we will go with him anywhere, is actually quite weak. And if you ask the question, would any conviction of any crime uh, uh, by uh, Donald Trump affect your vote, his support collapses. When people uh, hear about things, if they believe them, and many won't, uh, you know, he, he called his opponents vermin, when Hillary Clinton referred to Trump supporters as deplorables, it got 18 times as much news coverage, according to one study, um, as Vermin did. Many people are unaware of this. Uh, hardly anybody knows that Donald Trump spent 10 years in business partnership and involved up to his eyeballs with one of the biggest cocaine traffickers in America and did favors for him that make no sense whatsoever unless he was in the cocaine business with him that he had 12, 13, and 14-year-old children gambling in his casinos where he had to be 21. And, you know, 
So an 18-year-old guy or gal dolls up and they manage with a fake ID to get in the casino floor. 12? Excuse me? 12? Uh, uh, so... But let me let me put I, let me I, I think by the way will see as time goes by that Trump's support will be nowhere near um what it appears to be now. And also remember basically there are only six or arguably ten states that matter in this election. California is going to go for the Democrats, New York, Massachusetts, they're gonna go for the Democrats, Louisiana, Mississippi, they're gonna go Republican. So it's the states like Iowa, Georgia, Wisconsin, Michigan. Uh, Nevada, those are the ones that matter. And it's important that people turn out to vote, that they make sure that they're registered or or if they were registered, make sure they haven't removed you from the from the polls. And all you got to do is get out the vote. Donald Trump doesn't get to the White House. If you think it's inevitable that Donald Trump will go to the White House, you really have an incredibly low opinion of Americans. Hmm. Uh, interesting. The the piece was powerful for the way it laid out the argument, but maybe you're right. It underestimates the counterpunch that will uh, that will occur. Yeah. And uh, we'll see. Uh, David, I'll let you go, but you've been so great. Uh, you know, I'm gone for the rest of the year, but Kim will be here and, and really love whatever time you can spend with us. These Tuesdays good. are really special. I look special. forward to it. Have a good time off. Take care. Thank pal. you, my friend. All right. David K. Johnson, everybody. <laughs> Bye, David. Wow. I will uh, handle the... Um, I will handle the chat because uh, there was some pushback in the chat. And I'll handle it now. The Mark Thompson Show. There is, uh, let me look. There are some good, I'll take any, um, I'm not like Kim, so I don't mind <laughs> any. Oh, no, you got rid of it? Did no. you get rid of somebody? Mm-mm, okay. No, I got rid of no one. Okay, good. Because there was some. People disagreed, but no one was a name caller or a, or yeah. a troll. So um, that's all right. This guy, Andrew, where is Andrew's stuff? Andrew Peters, about, click, under, yeah. click under the starred ones, the ones that we saved on purpose, and you'll yeah, find a bunch of, I a bunch I of did. ones. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andrew mm-hmm. Peters. Um, uh, David Kay is using scare tickets to, here it is, scare tactics to keep the swamp in. Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, my man. Uh, when you talk about the swamp, are you really serious? The last guy, Trump, do you know who ran the Department of Commerce? Do you know who ran the EPA? Do you know who ran the Interior Department? All of those that I just mentioned were run by some of the biggest lobbyists in the history of Washington. Three of them that I can think of had to resign because they were so corrupt. You're telling me that this is the swamp? This is nowhere near the swamp. Your guy your Jesus, Donald Trump, he put lobbyists who sued those administrations, uh, uh, regulatory agencies that are designed to keep poisons out of the air, water, soil. He put lobbyists, coal lobbyists, in charge of EPA, Interior. It's absurd. Wilbur Ross ran the Department of Commerce. Look at Wilbur Ross. He didn't even divest himself of investments before he took over the Department of Commerce. So don't tell me, Andrew, about the swamp, brother, because your boy was, he put the S in swamp. It was laughable. So sorry, man, but you're, you know, you, I want whatever you're smoking because it is, you are in a dreamland, brother. Now, may, David may or may not be right about you know, Trump getting in. I think there's a very good chance that Trump will get in. And I've articulated some of the reasons, and I even took you through that piece that I asked David to comment on. But there is, I mean, there is no swamp like a Trump swamp. The military will never go along with Trump trying to institute a dictatorship. Just the opposite is true, Randy. Just the opposite is true. This time, Trump would get rid of the Mark Millies of the world, and General Flynn would be there handling all of the new hires at the Pentagon. And the military, if you look at the military in general, rank and file, they actually lean which way, Randy? They lean right. So, again, if you're evaluating the likelihood 
of the military going along. And again, when I when you say a dictatorship and I say a dictatorship, we talk about two different things potentially. I think there's this conception that it's the, you know, uh, the troops walking along the street, dictatorship like uh, communist China. That's yeah. not what this sort of dictatorship is. It's a creeping dictatorship that robs you of rights, that robs the government of power to protect you, that creates essentially a system by which you can be imprisoned, fined, and otherwise have your property taken by the government. That all seems so fantastic, like, a, what are you talking about, Mark, in the United States of America? Yes, mm -hmm. it can happen. These other places in Europe, you know, the, all the way over there in Europe where nobody pays attention, what do you think they were like before those dictatorships took over? And by the way, they still have elections. You think Hitler just didn't take over. There was an election. I'm this idea, that, well, there's an election in our country. We have an election. There are elections in all of these countries, in Central America, in South America, in Europe, in Hungary. There are elections, and there are also autocrats in charge. So just to make the point, it's not, I feel as though there's a disconnect. We've gotten fat and happy in this country. We have to protect those rights that we have, and I think we have to claw back a lot of those rights that we have lost. Can so. I can I make a I'm I I want to support Randy a little bit because and maybe this is Pollyanna. Ch -ch 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 yeah. But when you become a member of the military, you have to take the oath to pre preserve, protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. And so that's your oath. And I I understand that, you know, a dictator or a Trump would align himself with supporters and this time would be smarter about having people in power that were, you know, had his back. But I can't think that every member of the military, people who sign up to serve the country and take that oath to defend the Constitution would go along when they see it's being shattered. Wow, that's one of the most naive things I've heard in months. Okay, I, and I, and I thought to, you were going to say that to me. I, 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 yeah. I, and, I, and I have to say, I mean, I'm sorry, but I really want to slap yeah. that down because there's yeah. a lot of that. Oh, they would never do that. And come on, they're police officers. They, uh, they swear an oath. They're military officers. They swear an oath. Brett Burkhardt and I used to get into this constantly. Brett would constantly, well, they took an oath. They're going to, they, Brett was convinced that the beginning of the impeachment hearings Oh, yeah. They would all actually, because he was so impressed by the solemnity of the moment, you know, how they all signed their names and they walked mm -hmm. down, all that crap. It's crap. The oath is crap. Who took an oath? Trump took an oath. Remember, yeah. maybe you saw it on TV. All of these guys took oaths. The guys who ran all those departments, they took oaths. Mm -hmm. Everybody takes an oath in Washington. Menendez took an oath. The, the senator who took all the gold bars and cash, the oaths mean nothing. It is, it's the intent. And what I would say is, if you look at, uh, there were 230 military leaders who signed a, uh, rep retired military leaders, to be fair, who signed a letter supporting Trump. Um, that was in 2020. And if you look at the ranks of the military, there are even within the ranks of the military, uh, essentially built in rebellious groups. I mean, there, there are those who, as you're aware, they're, mm. uh, the military is a, is a true cross section of America. And the military also likes order. Many of the, those who are in, in, involved in the military favor order, as do I, by the way. And, 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 and I would just make this last point. I don't mean to be too harsh about this, but I really feel, feel like we all need a cold slap in the face. I mean, the idea somehow like somebody else is going to take care of the democracy. We talked about this with Anthony Davis. It's just not true. We all have responsibilities as Americans. And I think one of the things we get drunk on is, oh, yeah, those guys in the uniforms, they'll take care of us. They would never go for that. Well, I mean, it, the reality is, I'm sorry, oath or not, they will many of them be okay with trying to enforce order. And I have to say, a lot of the populace is okay, even if you look at some of the dictatorships that exist in other countries. Uh, in fact, I remember speaking to people uh, in Iran 
who used to talk about, well, the Shah keeps order. You could even talk about to people in Iraq who said, well, it was brutal. It was a brutal regime. I'm not saying that there weren't human rights abuses, but he kept order. People like order. And when you have a sense of lawlessness and society coming apart at the scene, seems that allows those like Trump and those who also seek that, seek that authoritarian rule, that allows them to rise to power. And now to the military. And the military likes to enforce order. And I, now the military isn't turned loose on the streets of America typically, but you've seen it in the way law enforcement takes to the streets. And believe me, I like it too. Do you think when I see these protesters taking on law enforcement, I go, you know, what's going on here? This is just not cool. These guys have to be, uh, you know, an ordered, peaceful protest is one thing, but the idea somehow that you can just create mayhem, no, not cool. So I think you have to protect these rights and you have to create order in a society that also allows citizens to have rights. And due process is a right. And I think the idea that we could give up a lot of these rights without it being something that happens with a thunderclap and a new national anthem is something that we all have to get our heads around. We had a huge slap in the face in 2016 when Trump won and all our jaws dropped and 150 million U.S. citizens turned on their TVs and said, you know, what the F? Yeah, and I mean, but look at the effects of uh, Trump's uh, reign or Trump's uh, uh, tenure. I mean, the, the, the effects were dramatic. And I guess all I'm saying is, without any guardrails, this time he'll have all of these people. Michael Flynn, I just use as kind of the uh, head of the parade, but he'll have Bannon back, and he'll have all of those who will essentially um, dismantle things like the Justice Department. Hey, my friend works at Justice. He said, this is during the Trump administration, he said, there's a guy here, he's not even a lawyer. He, he looks over everything to make sure that, that Trump doesn't have any interest. I think he had, a, like, there was some kind of initial they had on it. There was some kind wow. of a... Um, so like if it, if friend of white house or something, it was like a, you know, or friend of Trump, something. So my, my point is simply Kim, I don't mean, and then I'll shut up, but I mean, this yeah. idea somehow that, um, you know, oaths protect you and those guys would never go with that because we know people who've served in the military honorably. And we think, well, you know, th that represents the entire military. No, it yeah. doesn't, you know, and most of the guys take orders. I mean, honestly, that that is a good soldier. Somebody who takes all orders. I, you know, we're not looking for soldiers who are going to be thinking on their own. You got to pay attention to your superior. That's the way the military is. So if you can, can take if you can take control of the upper tier of the military, the rest follows. Yeah. These are scary times. I don't mean to be overly dramatic or over agitated, but I do think that we can. And, and you know, all of those phrases, sleepwalk toward authoritarianism, sleepwalk mm -hmm. toward the loss of the democracy, sleepwalk. There is a quality of sleepwalking because I think we have a, uh, a reversion to the mean, which is, you know, it's a normalcy bias. Things are going to get be normal. Well, you know, that was a, and then the other side saying that was not a big deal. We got through it. You know, the democracy held up. I don't know why you guys make such a big deal of this. But. Well, because didn't we all see that it only held up, you know, by the skin of our teeth, yeah. right? If it was, wasn't for just a very select few people, we would have been screwed. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think also that the um, um, doubt Trump's brilliance at your peril. Hitler looked like a joke, too. Not so funny in retrospect, is he? That's exactly right. And, and it wasn't even a majority of, uh, of Germans that, uh, that supported Hitler. I, I, I mean, again, the Hitler thing, I know you think, oh, Mark, really? You're going to compare Trump to Hitler? Again, it's a... It's a creeping authoritarianism. Pick the, you know, pick the authoritarian you want. But you just heard David K. Johnston yeah. lay out a pretty scary scenario, and he's much smarter than I am, uh, and, and he's seen a lot and knows a lot more. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's, uh, it's that tricky to figure this out. Um, anyway, I, um, I'm just looking at the... Um, so... Yeah, people can be convinced of a lot of things. And um, can Trump get rid of Social Security? Asked uh, Tom Gunn. My favorite gun is the Tom Gunn, as you know. Um, I don't think he can. He can't unilater unilaterally get rid of Social Security. But um, he could cut back funding with uh, congressional approval. And he'll get congressional approval on a lot of things once he takes over. Um, one would think. 
I mean, I mean, once he really takes over, I'm talking about on uh, funding for the Social Security Administration. You know, by the way, uh, that happens if the government closes down. Remember, we talked about this when the go- and the government still hasn't been funded past whatever date it is, February something. So mm-hmm. government closes down. Social Security Administration will run with a skeleton crew to get people who already have Social Security their checks. But apart from that, the entire Social Security Administration just grinds to a halt. So anyway, enough about this. But that's um, my word on that. And I don't mean to be too harsh about it. But I mean, I think it's really serious. And I think we are absolutely delusional. And that's what I told Brett. And stop picking on Brett is what uh, Doug is saying. No, but you're right when you say we look at the people that we know that are in the military, the men in my family that have served, my husband, my father, take their the oath that they took very seriously. And so when I think of people in the military, they're the first people that come to my mind and that, you know, they didn't. Uh, they they still that's at the top of their list as reasons why they joined, reasons why they served, and things they're proud of. Sure, so. and and you're right. I mean, it's like those who get stopped by a cop who treats them badly, and they think all cops are bad because right. their interaction with the one cop yeah. didn't go well. Right. Uh, it's not fair to other cops, you know. And similarly, and conversely, your and conversely is a ding word. <laughs> the uh, the. Uh, reality is that your experience with the yeah. people who serve in your family is not the same as... Uh, and look, they're serving likely under essentially responsible leadership. There'll be new leadership in, in charge, and so it'll be uh, different. Look at Phineas, I think, writes something really uh, good here. Look at how Trump effed up the USPS. I mean, exactly. It demands who, a real attention to who's in power, you know. Um, Karen says, Mark, you're right uh, on in every respect. It needs to be said and repeated over and over. Yeah, well, thank you. We need, more of, we need more Karen. Yeah. Listen, we need more if, Karen around here. You, if you need to give me or anyone else a cold slap in the face and that helps us not have another Trump, I'm all for it. You can cold slap me as many times <laughs> as it takes in order for our democracy well, to stand I, because I, I believe want, yeah. he's a threat. I believe he's a horrible threat hmm. and I will I will take the cold slap in order to have him not be in in power ever. Yeah, well it's I don't, you know, it's the it's the argument I want to give a cold slap. Mm-hmm. I never want to uh, get, uh, you even even metaphorically I don't want to give you. I, I well, adore take the cold, you. But sometimes cold slap the, me. Cold sometimes it. you have to ye- you have to yell Bring in the living on. room. Wait a minute, you people aren't paying attention. Uh, Tom Gunn, <laughs> my favorite gun, gives us a 20 big shout yes. out. Big shout out. Mhm. Mm-hmm. And thank you so much, Tom. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that. We are crowdfunded, and uh, we haven't really uh, uh, hit the you know, collection box uh, too hard, I don't feel like, uh, today. But it's, um, again, if you want to be part of our Patreon and PayPal community. In fact, you know, I'd like to, I wonder if I can do a quick news capsule, and then I do want to recognize a couple of new Patreon members and even some PayPal folks, too. Because without PayPal and Patreon, we go away. So all of you who are on Patreon and PayPal and support us, you are the thing. And I adore you all. I respect that there are a lot of places you can support. And among those places that you throw your support uh, is our show. And I promise you in the new year, and I'm kind of making this sort of year-endish kind of remark because I don't know that how many times we'll get a chance to visit between now and the end of the year, but... I I really want to make the point that in the new year, we will continue to work super hard and we're so dedicated to this show. So uh, thank thank you. Oh, here's something from BW Rock. Come on, B-Dub. B-Dub, $5 donation for a one, $1 million rant. Love it, Mark. Big shout, <laughs> Big out. shout out. Yeah, right on. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so, so thank you much. Thank you so, so much. And to all of you who support us, I... um. I say thank you. Thank, you thank, thank, you, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ron Cook says, hey, if Tom Gunn is in, I'm in. Oh, Big look shout at that. out, Ron Cook. Big shout out. Thanks they for started 20. a rally. That's yeah, nice. I love it. Who knew? I just need to lose my S once in a while and we get... Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, so we get, uh, we get the contributions. Wow. Um, unfortunately, at least 100 million can vote and only 15 million did vote last time. Except, well, we have this woefully poor turnout just generally. So, how about Deborah B with a ten dollars super sticker? Big, big shout, shout out. out! Big big shout out! Yeah, really cool. Thank you. 
Um, and I don't know, I missed that Mo Direct, something about Mo Direct. Commentators, are you being intentionally obscure? I don't know what mm. that's a reference to. Um, oh, here it is. Mo Direct. It's the group realization that the, it's the group. I love Mo Direct. He sounds like, uh, reminds me a lot of uh, Dr. Emil Schofhausen, the way he talks, doesn't he? Dr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emil yes. Schofhausen. So it's the group realization that there's an agreement to be within a system. At which point, certain liberties and freedoms are compromised to the integrity of the vessel you are now living within. Jeez. Uh, I can't wait to read your book, Mo Direct. But what you're saying is, yeah, it's a, we all give up a little bit for the system that allows all our liberties and freedoms to exist. That's exactly right. So, uh, Mo Direct, uh, you and Dr. Emil should um, collaborate. What can I tell you? All right, Kim's News, uh, News Capsule, and then I want to recognize some very special people, and we'll close out. Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. Well, big, big news. The four candidates who will participate in tomorrow's GOP debate are now set. I'm Kim McAllister on The Mark Thompson Show. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley, and entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy are set to take the stage in Tuscaloosa, Alabama for the event. Wow. Former President Trump still They're going to be throwing them. heat. <laughs> they are going to be throwing heat because it's getting to uh, getting to down to the uh, to the nub, right? Yep, it's that time. Former President Trump, who still holds a wide lead in the GOP polls, will instead take part in a Fox News town hall on Tuesday. <laughs> well, that's nice. Uh, uh, Mr. President, you're, first of all, you're still my president. Uh, do you think you're more, would you say, handsome or, or would you say uh, you're more intelligent? Which one is it? <laughs> that's what's going on over Fox. Mr. Trump... Uh, I uh, So he's essentially going to get a, a back and shoulder rub on Fox while the other ones debate. No, oh, that's nice. A back and shoulder rub. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want that, right? Los yeah. Angeles Mayor Karen Bass announcing this morning that a major California business is relocating its headquarters to Los Angeles. Bain of Cal or Bank rather, Bank of California is moving its main office from Santa Ana to downtown LA. Mayor Bass highlighting her efforts to improve the livability of the city for Angelinos, creating a better environment for companies to do business. The Bank of California, Bank with a C, B A N C, uh, has 30 Southern California branches stretching from Santa Barbara to San Diego. I want also, my money from a bank with a C. Yeah. A bank. I mean, or a Q U E B A N Q U E or a B A N C. <laughs> a bonk, bank, a bank or a bonk, bonk. Uh -huh. Yeah. Speaking of Los Angeles, the city council is scheduled to hear public comment and vote on whether to impose a cap on rent increases in the city. If the measure passes as proposed, landlords can only increase rent by 4% or 6% if they cover utilities. Council members say with this plan, every effort was made to address concerns of renters and landlords. If it passes, the measure will be in effect for six months, at which time the city council will address a longer term plan. There's some weather in the Bay Area and uh, in the on the Pacific Northwest as well. Some thick fog today and yesterday, especially in the Bay Area. The Northwest, though, expected to see heavy rain and snow in the next few days. The Weather Prediction Center has warned residents, especially in the Pacific Northwest and the Rockies, of hazardous to even impossible travel conditions. More than a half dozen states in the West are under some kind of winter weather alert as of this past weekend, as what's known as an atmospheric river spreads east for, eastward from Washington and Oregon to Colorado and and Wyoming. Remember this YouTube influencer who <laughs> intentionally crashed his plane in California? Remember that guy? 30 yeah, year old. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. He will spend uh, six months in federal prison for intentionally crashing his plane. 30 year old Trevor Jacob had faced up to 20 years behind bars. Again, he gets six months. He admitted to staging the crash for YouTube views and intentionally destroying the wreckage of the plane as well. Yeah, that's nice. George Santos has lost his $174,000 a year congressional salary. So 
Now he's reportedly selling personalized video messages for 200 bucks a pop. That's right. The disgraced oh politician God. was expelled from Congress last week. He's joined Cameo, which is a website where celebrities charge a fee to make individual video messages upon request. You know, George Santos could say, hey, Mark Thompson, I love your show. All we yeah. have to pay him is 200 bucks for that. No, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the New York Daily News reports one of Santos's first recordings is addressed to someone named Megan, where he offers advice on how to cope with criticism. He, he was also, uh, and they say he didn't know that he was sending a message to Bob Menendez, but oh my uh, God, Fetterman, great. Fetterman, I guess uh, Senator Fetterman w hired Santos to make a cameo message to, to Bobby, somebody named Bobby, who they were trying to get out. And and so, it's, yeah, that's a good one, too. That is perfect. That's yeah. very funny. You know, I mean, God, it, you, you can't even make this up, honestly. And now we have the movie about, uh, about Santos as well. So uh, CVS is changing the way it, it prices prescription drugs. The new approach, dubbed the CVS Cost Vantage, We'll use a new formula that includes the cost of a drug, a fee, and a markup to determine a drug's price and as the reimbursement with the pharmacy benefit managers. The company says the new model, which will launch in 2025, will bring more transparency to its drug pricing system. CVS executives say the shift in payment models could cause some drugs to cost less and make others cost more. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I knew anytime that, they I knew changed the something. It, yeah. yeah. Right. I knew at the end of it, it was, and some things may cost more. Some drugs much more. Yeah. <laughs> some oh, things really, must surprise. cost more. Oh, big surprise mm. there. Yeah. We, we, yeah. we wondered about that. Chat GPT, speaking of drugs, might not be a reliable source for medication-related questions, you think? A study by pharmacists at Long Island University found that the free version of Chat GPT provided inaccurate or incomplete answers to some questions about drugs. Other responses didn't directly address the questions that were asked. A lead author of the study says patients should be wary when using the viral chatbot for drug information and the responses should be verified by a doctor or other trusted care sources as well. Mm. Mm. Uh, and lastly, in Iowa, a driver who was pulled over on I-80-29 in Council Bluffs was clocked going 115. But the trooper who pulled him over says the driver admitted he topped out at 136 miles an hour. Wow. I mean, okay. According to the Iowa State Patrol, the driver told the trooper he was speeding because he was running late for work. And then he decided to see just how fast that car could go. <laughs> That's what you want to tell the cop. I want to see, I want to open her up and see what she could do. Yeah. Yeah. This report is crowdfunded, <laughs> which means we, we're sponsored by you. And we're so grateful uh, for all the help. You find us at themarkthompsonshow.com, themarkthompsonshow.com, the bread and butter of the show, the Patreon and the PayPal subscribers. So thank you so much. Themarkthompsonshow.com if you would like to support the show. I'm Kim McAllister. This is The Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. Who's Mark Thompson? Feels great. When they raided Mar a Lago, God didn't like that. Yeah. We are uh, so excited. The show is wrapping, but I want to, before we truly wrap up, I wanted to give a shout out, uh, as uh, the kids say, uh, the kids who are 50. <laughs> Big uh, shout out. Yeah. Uh, to a couple of our um, PayPal, you know, we Tony every month updates the scroll at the end of the show. Those are all people who are part of our Patreon community. Tony is awesome. Thanks, Tony. That's a really time consuming thing. It seems like it would be easy. You just add a name, no. but that's not what it is. It takes um, like three hours. <laughs> I know. We we do pay him for it, but it's still a uh, you know a pain. So um, the uh, the reason we run it every day is because it is every day that Patreon and PayPal contributors drive this show. I mean, really, without you, we're not here. All of you who 
make a difference in all the ways you do. You contribute in different ways. You contribute by sharing the show. You put it on Facebook. You that That is really a great way to increase our footprint and to get us more support. But truly, you know, everybody needs to be paid to keep the lights on. And so for that reason, we really appreciate your ongoing support. So quick shout out. Again, we'll add a lot of these names to the scroll at the end of the show if they haven't been added already. And some of them are really new, so they may not have been on PayPal. I want to give Miles a big shout out. Big shout out. Uh, contributed a hundred dollars, Kim, Whoa, which is you, really Miles. really cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, Miles, you are uh, awesome. Um, and Kesuki with ten dollars. I'm not going to cry. No, that is so cry. Nice. You're right. Hundred dollars is cry territory. Uh, Harry, of course, is a, it, one of our recurring supporters, and and Cheryl, um, thank you for the twenty. Uh, Linda and uh, Terrence and Brian uh, and Carol, Carol S, Mary H, and Robin says with her contribution of twenty dollars. Big shout out! Thanks, I love this show. And Kim, thank you oh, for being wow. there when Mark can't be there. I know those are big shoes. Maybe yeah. you should go on a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll go on the cruise with Courtney. That's what's Mark, gonna happen. Mark can take over. Love to Tony yeah. and the gang. Tony, you got a. Uh, Thanks, Tony. How about that? Yeah. Thank you for the 20. Thank you. From uh, Rob. I'm so moved by everybody contributing. It's really nice. It is really a, a great, mm -hmm. great thing. And uh, again, um, so many uh, cool, thankful for the Mark Thompson show. Uh, Mark, Kim, Tony, John gets a message, Albert gets nice. a mention, Katz, Johnston, all mm -hmm. from Irene. Wow. And a Hi, big Irene. contribution and a big shout out. Big shout out. Irene, yeah. uh, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. But she sent the show $200. How about <gasps> that? That is really wow. I'm not going to cry. I'm I mean, not going to cry. Great. On PayPal, again, through our PayPal link. Happy holidays. Um, Here's something for, from a $20, uh, he's just called, uh, it's Flea Buddy. I don't know what that is, but <laughs> sounds cool. Um, thank you, Mark. You keep our KGO look and feel alive, and we'll add so much more rich content. We all miss the old format. Yeah. With all the news and traffic breaks and advertisements and the array of instruments and support you had, it's not easy to adjust. We owe you, though, a debt of gratitude, and you can be assured that the flock of participants in the chat reminds you of that every day yeah. how much you are loved and that is from square how about oh, it square what a big, nice shout message out. big shout too. out to square awesome. really cool so uh thank you all this is really really great thank you all of you who found um paypal marion thank you for um big marion hv i'll just say i don't like to give me the last names i don't want you to get you know uh uh, solicitors coming yeah, after yeah. you. Still loving men, uh, uh, MT and all. That's from Geraldine and uh, and uh, Steve and Asley and Dale and Janice and Eric. All of your names will be up there. Thank nice. you. Those are our um, our PayPal folks. Linda is a new member on Patreon. Big shout Big out to shout Linda. Out. I always send a little something to uh, you. It'll, Patreon allows me to do that. PayPal doesn't. So. Mm. Um, but, uh, Lynn as well, uh, L I N H. Thank you, Lynn as well. Big so, shout out. Yeah. Big shout out to both of you, Linda and Lynn for becoming new members on PayPal. If you want to join again, maybe put up the, uh, scroll in case people don't know or whatever. Here's the, it is, it's the Mark Thompson show.com. It's pretty easy. You have to put the Mark Thompson show.com in there. If you don't put the, the in there, you end up at a ventriloquist. Red website, what? and he's very good. I've mm. watched his stuff, but um, I completely disagree. Well, I I think he's good, and uh, I like him, but it doesn't help our show. So you need to go to themarkthompsonshow.com, click Patreon or PayPal. Those links are hot links, and they take you right to us. So big shout out, big shout out, everybody who uh, will be part of the show in the new year. I'm not going anywhere. We've got a great show tomorrow. In fact. Um, do I have to leave here? Pinky with a dollar oh, a day, but $2 today, Pink. Big shout out. Big shout out, Pink. Thank you.
I have a story that I forgot to put in news. Can I tell you really quick? Well, one second. Ashley, come on for oh, 20. Ashley. Big shout out. Big shout out, Ashley. And thank you so, so much, thank Ashley. Thank you so, so much. And Cheryl Massarelli. Wow. What up, Cheryl Massarelli? Thank you so Very much. Cool, you thank guys. you for a 20. Vicky and Sausalito. Mm -hmm. Mark, thank you for your wonderful speech. You are so right. Yeah. Well, wow, thank you. Thank you for that canned applause and for big that shout big out. shout out and more than anything for contributing. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Kim, I'm sorry, you were saying? No, no, I just wanted to tell you the story. There, this happened on an Oakland freeway on December 1st. This driver was rolling along at Interstate 80 right at the 580 transition when all of a sudden they started hearing the flat tire noise, right? Driver pulls over. They end up getting rolling over to a tire repair shop. The tire repair guy takes the, the wheel off and realizes it's a bullet fragment found in the tire. Oh the guy's God. tire was shot out. Like just a random bullet whacks somebody's tire on the freeway in Oakland. I just Welcome. wanted to mention that. Welcome CHP to America. CHP called yeah. the bullet fragment. Uh, they wanted to get additional details. A loud noise apparently was heard right at the time the, the vehicle's tire was popped. Uh, they didn't no, but they think maybe someone was extending their hand out of a vehicle, possibly an older model Nissan Altima, maybe the suspect vehicle. Mm. Anyway, just another incident of a freeway, you know, gunfire in Oakland. Well, you know, welcome to America, everyone. You haven't really experienced the country until your mm. tire has been shot out because uh, everybody has a weapon and, uh, you know. it's uh... yeah. Look, you take uh, that exam when you get a uh, weapon, a uh, firearm, and uh, you kind of pledge there. There's another example, Kim, of a pledge. Well, that I would really say that the guy who did that probably didn't you think get it was his an accident? weapon legally. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true, too. The, he, I don't think yeah. there are any pledges taken getting that. No. Uh, very, very yeah, good. Personia. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, we're finishing up with comments at the end of the show. Uh, Agolf Twitler says 14 million jobs are created under Joe Biden. That's 10 times the number of jobs created by the last three Republican presidents combined. Yeah, and that's the word that has to get out if uh, you're a Biden supporter, um, most certainly. I also uh, saw a couple of other comments, somebody taking me on real quick. Oh, Larry says, Mark, you might want to tread lightly on lobbying. Teachers union, government closed shop unions, um, uh, teamsters, teamsters maybe that is, or yeah. lobbyists as well. Happy holidays. Oh, oh absolutely. I mean, uh, and, and you know, if you have a cause of any kind of veterans uh, benefits whatever it may be let's pick something that there usually is not too much controversy around um you need some lobbying to get things through washington don't get me wrong but when you put a coal lobbyist someone who sued the epa in charge of the epa i mean it was really the wolves guarding the hen house under the trump administration that was the point i was making um so i'm using lobbyist as the evil lobbyist but you're right not all lobbyists are evil and we all need lobbying done for us for many causes some of which are quite virtuous ron cook says usps runs on postage fees but DeJoy owned a competing trucking company and his objective is to privatize the post office and limit mail voting of course that's true we discussed it at the time uh the idea behind a lot of what's going on with uh, public funds and public enterprises like the USPS, which is a remarkable organization in so many different ways, is to privatize. And uh, the army, the military, the idea was to privatize. Eric Prince mentioned here, Ron Cook says, just like Eric Prince wants to privatize the military and his sister Betsy DeVos wants to privatize education. Exactly. That plan continues. Those people have receded into the shadows a bit, because that last administration is over, but they are still around. So very, very good points all. That's uh, why I like our crew. Receded should be a ding word. Receded it would be a ding word. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this has been uh, a good show. We had a lot in this show. David K. Johnston, we kind of road tested that whole Trump is the inevitable next in power and dictatorship is inevitable we road tested that with david and he kind of maybe recalibrated things for us a little bit we had a lot of attendant conversations we had a that's rich segment that was spilling over we might be able to get a a short out of that don't you think tony maybe uh, yeah. i don't know maybe. tony does a lot of the shorts for us so he's really Thanks, tony. it's really a cool thing and another way you can share this show 
Thanks, everybody. The after party live is live. I'm Shadow Stevens for the Mark Johnson Show. Bye bye. I'm back here tomorrow and looking forward to seeing you. Bye bye. Until then, bye bye.